Hello. Hey. Nope, I just started it. Um, or I'm getting it up, up and ready. Um, the owl. Oh, I see the lights on. I just have to figure out. I remember how to do the speaker part of that part. <laughs> oh, well, I've got the meeting up and going right now. It, yeah. Uh, let's see. This one's you. Oh, my toolbar on the very bottom? Wow. Yep. Okay. Plus, I got to go. Oh, yeah, we're the other one. Oh my god. Is it? Yeah, next year I'll get to do this. It's got some light in the air. I gotta get the drywall finished. Yeah, so exactly. so um, let's see. Did it stay owl right on there? Right off the 115. Let's try that from the zoom tool. Right. Zoom tool? Yeah. So here I'll let you know. Yeah, she's right here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Bye. She's yeah, I don't see owls showing up, but hey, I don't have the owl underneath the speaker. Do I have to have a separate? The lights are on on the owl. We'll connect. Because, okay, because um, I'm not even getting a selection to, you know, I see your, what you were explaining, but it's, no. So do you remember when you had to set it up on your computer? Is that something I have to do? do you okay. She's not seeing. She's not. Seeing. Here, I'll let you talk. Bye, Sue. It's Jody. So I'm not seeing it as any of our options to choose. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's like um it's like the computer isn't seeing. So to try to come in. And I apologize, other than that night that you guys were here, I haven't used the yellow by myself. So, no. Yeah, but the, her laptop isn't seen it at all for some reason. And the almost got like the, the lights are like, its eyeballs are blinking white. <laughs> I think so. If she hasn't used this one. Test, test, test. Can you guys hear us? Apparently, I 
We're just testing our audio again. Can those of you, us, those of you on the Zoom hear us right now? I can hear you. I'm on Zoom. Heidi, it looks like you could hear us. We couldn't hear you, though. Can you try again? Um, yeah, I can hear you. What's he doing? It's really the evening one. Can you hear me now? Hear me? Oh. All right, Heidi, can you try again for us? What do you think of that soccer game, Maureen? Thanks, Heidi. Can you try yeah, one no, more time for us? Wow, so you give all the money to the quarters, right? There's nobody left to find anybody else. Are you able to hear me now? Yeah, right. Yes, we did. Thank you so much. Yeah. Are we ready to rock and roll? Okay. Here we will call. You guys hear me? We have a recording now. I'm sorry, Chuck. We call the meeting the order. Please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank everyone for attending. Uh, and I also want to thank Cassie, the deputy clerk, for helping me out. Uh, this is my first meeting as chair, so I certainly appreciate the help and guidance. Very much appreciated. Having said that, uh, we'll look at the minutes. Next thing on the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Are there any changes or amendments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 So opposition motion carries unanimous. Public comments on, I think we're probably saying agenda items. Are there any public comments on the agenda items? Once again, any public comments on the agenda item? Down on the second. Yes, sir. Supervisor Deferan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I uh, see on the agenda that uh, there is a discussion about uh, possibly entertaining uh, from Kenosha County, uh, having Wisconsin being a Second Amendment state. And I want to uh, uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, first off, I'm very much in favor of that. I'm in favor of having um, uh, either Winnebago County or Wisconsin being a Second Amendment uh, sanctuary state. Um, or, and or county. We entertained a, a similar resolution on the Judiciary and Public Safety Committee um, as well, and uh, that uh, passed uh, unanimously, I believe. And um, uh, with, um, uh, we also looked at something similar to that in regards to the Justice and Public Safety Committee for NACO, um, but uh, not necessarily a, a Second Amendment sanctuary, but simply addressing what would, um, simply addressing uh, gun violence and violence in general. 
And uh, what we looked at instead was really regarding addressing mental health. And uh, uh, as maybe you have known in uh, uh, recently, Wisconsin is actually uh, ranked as number one in regards to mental health treatment. And we're actually um, putting forth a lot of really good incentives here in Winnebago County addressing mental health. Uh, we're uh, very much cutting edge in regards to that, especially with the Winnebago County Connect program. We're looking to fund that. Um, uh, for the forthcoming years and uh, in, uh, including uh, uh, connecting diversion programs from uh, and putting people away from, uh, diverting them from incarcerated and connecting them to local services. Uh, for me, in the, um, uh, I believe that the best way to address violence is to have proper resources allocated within the community, within local government. Um, and uh, we're, uh, I think that we've become a leader for that here in Winnebago County. I don't think that the best way to do it is through law and through uh, uh, regulations and legislation. I think that uh, there could be some unintentional side effects in regards to that. Um, if uh, um, if uh, gun laws are uh, not properly enforced or they're just simply very vague, that could turn into something borderline tyrannical, but not just simply tyrannical. It could also just simply mean that we're not, uh, that it's not achieving its actual intent, intended solutions. Um, and so I think that uh, what we're doing here in Winnebago County is correct. I don't think that we should really uh, be looking at this uh, in regards to creating more red flag laws and uh, creating more uh, gun legislation here. So um, uh, that's that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Deferring. Are there any other public comment? Any other public comment? Hearing none, we'll close that portion of the meeting. Correspondence. Hey, Cassie, do we have any correspondence? Not that I'm aware. Okay, does anybody else have any correspondence they want read as a record? Hearing none, we'll move on to the agenda items. First one on the agenda is discussion and action on a resolution uh, number. 22 from Kenosha County to conduct a countywide advisory referendum. And I, I think that refers to Kenosha County on making the state of Wisconsin a Second Amendment sanctuary state. If I might uh, offer my thoughts here a little bit. Uh, as I read this, it appears it's being brought forward by a committee from Kenosha County. Unless they only have a uh, six member county board. And I suspect uh, what they're doing is asking for support from other counties for them to bring it forward uh, on their county board level. Would I be incorrect on that? They're bringing it forward to uh, bring it to Wicca. Wisconsin County, Wisconsin County, County Association. Oh. Okay, that seems to be the premise. And that was the primary reason I put it on the agenda for review by this review and action by this committee. Uh, do I have a motion to put it on the floor? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Now we're open for discussion. Is there any discussion? So, what is the motion? Pardon me? What is the motion that we are considering? The motion is put it on the floor for discussion to approve or disapprove the resolution forwarded from Kenosha County. Okay. So this is the Kenosha County resolution you want to talk about? Yes, right. that's how I read right. it, unless somebody has a different understanding. So if we approve this, if we approve of this, are we approving what Kenosha County is doing? Or is that saying that we're going to have our own referendum? That's the question I have. No. I don't, yeah, go right ahead. I don't think so. Okay. No, we could not have a referendum because the right. date to have a referendum right. would pass. Right. Right. This is just talking about Kenosha County and whether the board supports mm -hmm. Kenosha County putting this to a resolution mm -hmm. or to a referendum. Isn't it kind of mute because they probably have passed this already? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
There's a resolution, a statewide concern, and it's a resolution addressing the county issue. Um, well, what you're reading is from WCA. They have a little different level, perhaps, than we do as a legislative committee here in Waverly County. I do appreciate your thoughts on that. But I, I think, uh, uh, in my opinion, this has all got to do with the United States government. They're passing of a bill that would support and promote red flag laws. And I think we're starting to see a little pushback from our counties in regard to that issue. Uh, Supervisor Deferring, would I be incorrect? Uh, correct. Okay, thank you. So uh, if I might premise the discussion, I think that's kind of what this is all about. Is there any other discussion? And make a motion to take no action on it because it's a new point that you might have been. I'm on. not hearing you, sir. I take up, I make a move to take no action on this because I believe it's a new point at this point. I have a motion to take no action. Is there a second to that motion? I have a second on that. I have a motion and a second to take no action. Any discussion on that? Karen? <clears throat> yes, sir. Yeah, so we currently, as Supervisor Gaffney had uh, mentioned, we actually do have a uh, resolution that has gone through our GPS committee as well, kind of addressing kind of a similar tone to this. And I think that uh, if we're looking to move forward with that as well, that it would probably be in our interest for now, now, obviously, they already passed this. Um, it looks like it should be on later. Uh, but I believe as we start to prepare ourselves uh, that this is supported and that we can actually bring this forward to our own board for further discussion. To clarify, you have a resolution come forward from Judicial Committee? Yes. So it's to passed. this body or to the county board? To the county board. Any other discussion before I call for the vote? Supervisor, Chairman, I'd like to clarify that uh, those that went ahead and wanted that brought forward come to me after the meeting and said, let's hold off on it. So it wasn't that I just held back on it. They said, let's hold off till October or November. So it comes from two individuals that went to the uh, Judiciary Committee and brought it forward. So I just want to make that very clear. And I think... Uh, Mr. Gunderson can go ahead and can go ahead and just say that. Yeah, he's right. So. Okay, but it is pending. Yeah. That is yep. that the term? Yep. That's correct. Any other discussion before I call the call for the vote? Question is to take no action, correct? All those in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 All say nay. Nay. We have one name. With the position of this body is to take no action. We will move on to discussion and action number seven. Uh, resolution requesting the state of Wisconsin review and revise its policy on foreign ownership of farmland by entities party to an adversarial governments. <laughs> Excuse my... Uh, Misinterpretation of the word here. Do I have a motion to put it on the floor? So moved. So second? second. I have a motion and a second. I'll say, gentlemen, we're open for discussion. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, may I recognize Supervisor Paul? Uh, uh, discuss a little bit further. You may, sir. Mr. Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So basically, when we take a look at this resolution, there's a lot of text and graphs here. So I'll just distill it down to the core point. The core point of this is just asking the state to take a look at its policy on board of farmland by powerless to adversarial in the United States. So I look at board here uh, and just the government themselves, China, Russia, and Korea, and Iran. Uh, this is possible. Uh, I took a look at the if you look at the back, there is an attorney general decision from 2014. The state did try to revise this policy in 2014. It was 
shut down. We didn't move forward with it. Uh, but this would be a much, much, much narrower description of that. Uh, in 2014, the Attorney General gave the Anne Holland Park 26 and said that we can edit the amount of farmland uh, that foreign powers own. However, we can, that's all we can do. Farmland and forestry, any other type of land use, we cannot edit as per the GAC Treaty or General Agreement on Trade Zones. So basically, this is a simple communication that you can tell the state to get moving on taking a look at some of these adversarial foreign powers and parties to them, state owned corporations and whatnot, who are taking a look uh, at buying farmland and trying to buy and sell land in the state of Wisconsin. And so it's not a lot narrower than the 2014 bill uh, mm -hmm. that the state brought forward, which we put it down. Uh, I did talk to the uh, chairman of the Farm Bureau, Kevin Prince. He did say we need to do something about this specifically as required in the United States. Uh, if you'll take a look here, most of the farmland in Wisconsin is owned by the UK, uh, Holland, and Germany, uh, but that there's nothing in the state of Florida that we prevent our benefits of this by how the president. So that's all I have right now. I'll let you guys discuss the rest. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for your explanation. Any further discussion from the committee? Mr. Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You for um, yeah, just to it. reiterate, um, Mr. Sloan had talked about, I actually have a, a bill being drafted right now. I checked with the Ledge Council um, uh, about this and going back to uh, the 2013 okay. governor's budget bill, um, there is a, a provision in there and uh, what Jacob talked about with the GATS agreement, um, there was some concern that this couldn't be done. The Attorney General did rule on it. Um, so I will be uh, drafting legislation um, this session uh, or, or next session coming up in January uh, to deal with this. It, it's a concern of a number of my colleagues uh, in the assembly. And uh, so, you know, I, I don't know what you guys want to do with it at the county level, but, uh, you know, we're we're going to be dealing with it at the state level. Would it be correct to interpret that the passage of this would support your point of view and position? Yeah, I think so. Um, if anybody's interested, the state statute is, is 710.02. Um, and you can, I have a drafting file if you um, are interested in looking at uh, what was done back in the governor's budget bill. Um, Ledge Council was able to give me some of that information. So, uh, but I, I would say, yeah, that would be in support of state legislation. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'm curious um, about the four countries that are listed. And I don't know if you want, you know, or, or even Representative Shaw, if you want to talk about how your bill is similar or different. But uh, why are those four? Why is it limited to those four? What other, you know, countries like, you know, countries are are involved in buying up? Uh, uh, farmland in, in Wisconsin, uh, how much do these countries have? And um, uh, what, what, you know, I guess, la like lastly, what are the, what, you know, what was sort of the criteria you thought about when you selected China, Russia, Iran, and mm -hmm. North Korea? Um, I, I guess for me, the, the fact that um, you're starting to see um, more and more reports of um, China actually buying uh, acreage around some of our military bases. Um, you know, I, I think our food source is of national importance. Um, <clears throat> the Chinese have already um, come in and bought a big pork producer in the United States. Um, and, um, you know, in, in the, the reason the four I, the four countries were listed is because those uh, four countries have really never been uh, friendly to the United States. Um, you know, there could be more more states that would be added at some point um, that would take different legislation, but um, these are not friendly countries to the United States, and I think we have to you know do whatever we can to protect our farmland and. Um, 
Thank you, Mr. The reason why I picked those four is the reason why I excluded them on other ones is because we don't want to punish these foreign corporations or foreign countries that do buy land in Wisconsin and do it in good faith. So if you pull up, like, the largest foreign owner of farmland in Wisconsin is not in right? And so we don't want to basically take somebody who's abided by international trade laws, labor standards, and practices and just throw a hand at them in the corporations. So these four were picked specifically to kind of as a safeguard. Uh, the Russians don't have access to equipment, they might help the cover and buy the farm. But we basically want to say that, you know, if you're a party to one of these governments, that means they want to go and go to a third party and buy the farm. So, so I want to ask about a couple of other countries. Then. Did you think about including the Central African Republic or Yemen or Saudi Arabia? I did not believe in that movie. I don't know okay. the, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to delete the entire last whereas clause. Hang on, let me make sure I'm with you. Okay. Be it, whereas be the it further resolved? Nope, the last whereas. Uh, I'll, whereas I'll, the combination I'll, right. of the two factors. So that deletes the four countries by name. It still keeps the premise here. And then similarly in the now, therefore, be a resolved clause uh, to end that at farmland and delete by individuals and corporations party to the governments of the People's Republic of China, the Russian Federation, the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, and restrict these aforementioned parties from buying farmland in Wisconsin. Um, doesn't change what the what the direction is. It just takes the editorial scope out of what this county board or what this committee is saying about uh, about foreign policy. Five minutes. Do I have a second for that Nine. motion? I do have a second. Okay. Any further discussion on the <laughs> amendment? All in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the amendment carries. Now we'll go back to the resolution as amended. Is there any further discussion on the resolution as it currently stands? Yes, sir. Uh, I'll vote against this. I think, uh, uh, I think we as a county board have often lamented when the state tells us what we need to do. Uh, and so, vice versa, I'm going to uh, vote no because I don't, I don't want to tell tell us tell the state what we think uh, they need to do about something that doesn't seem central to what the county county board's uh, operations are. Okay, I actually will be supporting it. I, I think it's when you're can affect our food chain. They got 500,000 acres just in, you know since 2022. They decide not to plant that. What will happen to our industry as far as the grain industry goes? The prices are going to go up. People can't afford prices grain right now. We got Ukraine that basically is, is a scramble, and, and they were a major player in the grain market. It, it could be, you know, not in the near future, but we don't know what's going to happen down the road. They just decided, well, we're not going to, they got a million acres, now we're not going to plant it. You know, let, let the United States figure out where they're going to get their food from. You know, why would we give somebody that kind of power over our country? We have good farmers here that they, they drive up the price of farmland. So our farmers can't afford to buy it. And when you have basically other countries buying it, they don't really care what it costs. They just want to take control of this land and then they will decide what they're going to do with it. So I will be supporting this and hopefully the state does go forward and limit the amount of land that they can purchase so that down in the future for our children, they don't have to worry about who's going to plant their corn or, or their soybeans, that we'll own the land and we'll plant it for ourselves. Thank you for your comments. Any further discussion? Is there a motion? Uh, I think I have a motion to put it on the floor. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution as amended? Did I have that? Okay. I'll call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. We have one nay. Thank you. Uh, let me. Uh, a little remiss on the agenda here. Uh, thank uh, our legislators for attending today. We certainly do appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> number eight is discussion only. I put this on the agenda, uh, not only so the committee chairman will 
be aware of what's going on in this county, but certainly our legislators. Uh, as I have brought up on the county board level in regard to the committee, which I'm chairman of, Land Conservation Committee, there's uh, quite an issue that has been presented to all the FSA chairman primarily from the Farm Service Agency committees uh, under a statutory requirement, the chairman or their designee of that committee is on the land conservation committee of each county. And such is the case in our county. However, the director of the Farm Service Agency uh, for the state of Wisconsin has issued an order that the Farm Service Agency representative cannot vote, generally speaking, on anything that would involve an agricultural issue that would affect the FSA on a land conservation committee. So this brings up all kinds of issues. First thing is, why do we have them on there in the first place? Because the Land Conservation Committee and also a uh, citizen's representative, who is generally a farmer, advised the committee on all kinds of farming issues, commodity issues, etc. With this ruling from the state, it circumvents the intent of state law under chapter 92. Mm -hmm. So now there's a lot of discussion going on between the conservation groups within the state, the executive committee of the conservation groups, and the Wisconsin Counties Association as to how do we address this issue. And the proposal currently uh, is to amend state law to coincide with the directive from the Farm Service Agency. Uh, I. In my thoughts, yeah, I would be very cautious about that. Uh, things can be tweaked perhaps to satisfy the federal government's request uh, through their agent, but uh, caution I would think would be uh, probably the best route <coughs> forward. Once again, these, these representatives are very important to our committee. Uh, it even gets to the point, the question becomes whether or not they can even vote on the committee because they're an FSA representative. Uh, that's my explanation. I want everyone to be aware of that. We will keep uh, this committee up to date as we go forward. Uh, I have a WCA uh, Ag Environment Land Use Steering Committee meeting on Friday. Uh, it's not an agenda item, but it will be uh, discussed. Uh, by uh, a presentation in general speaking. So that's kind of where we are. Is there any questions I can answer? Anyone have any questions? If not, it's primarily an awareness situation. The next thing we will address is number nine, discussion and action and resolution, requesting the state of Wisconsin review and revise the entry level compensation rate for assistant district attorneys. Do I have a motion to put it on the floor, John? I have a motion and a second. I assume the district attorney would like to address us. Again, Please you. come forward, sir. You would. Thank you, Eric Clark from the district attorney's office. Uh, Supervisor Cologne had reached out some time ago when this had first, well, before it went to JPS. Um, this is something that's been an issue statewide and. Historically, there's been significant turnover for assistant DAs, but we've been to some degree immune to that. Um, recently, we, we did get hit. Uh, we lost three people over the last five or six months uh, out of 12 total lawyers. We have filled one of those positions. We have two that remain vacant in a five and a half month time frame since the first vacancy. We've had three applications for those positions. The driving force with that is salary. Um, Again, though, it's not unique to Winnebago County. There are a number of offices that are in worse situations than we are. There's one office that has 10.5 attorney positions. They, for quite a while, were at 3.5 with those positions filled. They have five courts, so that's, that creates uh, essentially an impossible situation for them to cover what they need to. 
Uh, Washera County has three attorney positions and two courts. They were sitting at one attorney. I think they still are sitting at one attorney. That's been the case for a while. Uh, and there are other situations like that around the state. <coughs> uh, comparing prosecutor pay to other states, Wisconsin generally lags behind. Uh, comparing it to other public sector jobs, it also is significantly lower. Uh, the starting pay is in the mid 50s for somebody coming out of law school. And that, that number doesn't sound terrible in isolation, but in the context of somebody going through college and law school, which is three years beyond college, uh, they come up with a significant number of amounts in, in loans. And it's just not a, a realistic choice for a lot of new lawyers to make. So uh, as time has gone on, especially over the last 10 years or so, and other jobs have increased their pay, including a lot of similar positions, we've actually lost two of our people uh, to assistant or to city attorney positions, Nina and Manasha. Both of them got significant pay increases making those moves. Uh, so as time has gone on, it's just become less and less attractive, more difficult for us to fill those positions or even get applicants. Uh, so I understand that's not something that this committee or even this board uh, can directly control. This is a state issue. It is something that's been put forth in the Business Attorneys Association budget. Uh, so we have made a request for an increase uh, about approximately $10 per hour in the pay rate for assistant DAs. And that would be an increase in the starting rates. There's a possibility that they could also uh, adjust the rate for people who are no longer at the bottom. Uh, so I'm not sure how that's going to be handled. I think that this perhaps is the crisis that was necessary for the state to address this. I'm hopeful that they will, but there are certainly no guarantees. And I think a uh, recommendation from, from this committee and from the county board would be helpful. Thank you. Are there any questions of the district attorney from the committee members? Yes, sir. I'm going to ask one that's probably pretty basic. So if you don't have enough staff to handle all the cases, to move through the people are spending more time in jail, cost the sheriff's pocket more, more money to, to staff that and everything like that. Are there other implications for, for the county? Yeah, I think the, the biggest one is the speed with which cases get into the system. So if we don't have enough people, we have to send people to court. That's something that we we have certain choices we can make about what can wait or what we can decide not to do. Uh, covering court is not one of those things. So people have to go to court. Uh, the, the thing that really gets put on the back burner is charging cases. Uh, we try to prioritize the people that are in custody. So it, those are the ones that could really have an impact on the jail and the county budgets. Uh, we want to get them into the system as quickly as possible. Uh, that can suffer though, because we have all of our people in court on a given day, then the people who are in custody that got arrested the previous day are not going to be charged that day. Uh, the real impact though is on cases that are referred to our office for people that are not, in, individuals that are not in custody. Uh, those are the ones that they're, they're not as urgent, but they're taking longer to get into the system. <clears throat> That's not a good system for, or not a good situation for victims or for offenders really for anyone. Uh, so it, it puts us in a position where we have to make difficult choices that are it's just it's not ideal um there's there's going to be um something's got to suffer and that's a matter of human what it's going to be <coughs> thank you thank you are there any other questions uh, for the district attorney yes sir you know, have a backlog of cases that you're needing to look at act on at this time and what would uh standard let's say standard yeah, so we, I guess I can, I can get at both those things. Um, one, we have in the neighborhood of, I don't know what the most recent numbers have been, about 5,000 cases that come in per year. Um, historically, over the last five years, we typically run about 50 to 70 cases backlog. And that's cases that are, have been in our office for 30 days. So in those first 30 days, we're not counting those. We figure that's an acceptable amount of time for people that are not in custody. Um, during which to get those cases charged. Uh, once they get outside that 30, there is a report that comes out each week that we send to all the lawyers in our office, letting them know how many cases they have that they haven't acted on within 30 days. That is the number I'm talking about that's generally been about 50 to 70. Uh, right now, that's more like 100. Uh, so it's a little higher, but still, that's something that doesn't approach what we've heard of from a number of other counties. We heard, uh, as I believe we had Allegheny and Brown counties in, in the media talking about how they needed Allegheny was pursuing county positions. I think they got four county positions to help their DA's office, uh, some of which were attorney positions. I don't remember how many, uh, but those counties were talking about backlogs and thousands. Uh, 
Uh, so that's not a situation that we have had in, in recent memory. And I think that it's just imperative that we make choices that are going to keep us in that situation, even if we're down people. Um, but it, again, it, it creates situations where we do have to make sacrifices. That number could creep up a little bit. We're at 10 lawyers right now out of the 12 that we should have. Uh, and I guess there's a half time on our <coughs> position, a two year position that we haven't. I don't think there's much chance we're going to fill that. Um, that's just not something that's going to be that appetizing to most people that have law degrees. Um, but if we're at 10, we, I think, can maintain about where we are. It's it's a challenge, but we can do it. If we had someone else leave, we had a group three, we're going out nine people. That was getting to be a, a precarious situation. But uh, for now, uh, our backlog is a little higher than it normally would be. We're not able to act quite as quickly on things. Uh, and it, it just handcuffs up us a little bit, but it's not a, a desperate situation yet. Representative Hench, how are you, sir? Thank you. Good to see you, sir. Um, question. Um, in the, you know, a lot of the budget requests from agencies are, are made now during this time. Some are out, like some of the bigger ones come closer to November, and then whoever the governor is gets a couple months. Did, was there a request for increases, you know, in the budget request? Yeah, my understanding is the state prosecutor's office put forth that I believe it was exactly a $10 per hour increase in the base pay. Um, I think that tracks pretty much with the state public defender's office uh, request as well. Okay. And they also, I, believe, I haven't actually seen the final the final version of that, but I believe the plan was to include some sort of provision to scale up the people that have gotten off of the bottom already. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that's going to be. Mike, Mike and I were talking, I mean, I know in the assembly and probably even when we were on finance, both with public defenders mm -hmm. and prosecutors, I apologize, we apologize. A lot of times we pass things in the assembly, it doesn't make it to the Senate. Um, you know, this isn't the only public sector position that you guys are dealing with it as well. I mean, it's really hard to plan how we're going to do this. And, you know, it's one thing if we don't have enough crews out there plowing or picking up garbage at the local level. It's another thing regarding staffing our prisons and prosecuting, you know, keeping our streets safe. And so I think resolutions like this are important enough to spread the word to the other counties out there that we have. The DAs like uh, Mr. Spar, you know, explain what the consequences are, both the safety and the supervisors, Gallagher said, um, cost as well. So, you know, there is a proposal out there. I think the next thing is to make sure the governor uh, takes that proposal and introduces it. Um, but I also say that this isn't the only public sector hole that we have right now, um, including because the state has the money. So, the people that are still around will have to make sure <laughs> that money's spent. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Is there any other discussion from the committee? Yes, sir. Do you feel like your like, training facility for, for entry level attorneys that they come there to get two, three, five years experience and then they go to the private sector to make more money? I mean, we talked about the state having millions of dollars in reserves, and it, it, it's actually to, to hire somebody for fifty-four thousand dollars with a minimum of seven years worth of education. I mean that that's just not justified. I mean there, there's no reason why that that what you're asking for is seventy-five thousand. That to me is still too low. What happens is you have attorneys that are basically entry level going up against attorneys that are very experienced. And it's like once they get four or five years experience, they leave. And they go into the private sector. So what we are is a training facility. And you know, I hope that the state recognizes that and puts the wages to a, a reasonable level where you can hire an experienced attorney, or at least they'll stay with you if you spend four or five years training them. They're not going to go to the private sector after they basically get an education through your office and then go represent somebody else. So I, do you feel like your training facility? Well, I think that. That's a little bit less true than it was. Historically, that was exactly what was happening. And I think there are some places in the state where that is still what's happening. About half of our lawyers have been around 10 years or more. So I think that we've avoided that to some degree. Uh, the people that the people that we just lost, uh, one of them had been with us about seven years. Uh, so that was a pretty significant amount of time. Another was an attorney who has been, he was a longtime defense attorney, had been a lawyer for about 20 years when he came to us, was with us for about four years. Uh, and then the other one was a relatively new attorney. Uh, she had been a lawyer for about a year and a half when she came to us and was with us for about two years. So that's a, a pretty much an example of what you're talking about. 
Um, I think it's what that really illustrates is not just the need to address the starting pay, but to, to address address people's progression through the system. So to make sure that there are consistent, predictable increases in pay as people stick around. Otherwise, we'll have exactly what we said that we would be able to recruit quality people, uh, but if pay doesn't increase over time, then they're going to. And so I think the, the situation overall around the state is a little better than it was 10 years ago, for example, with, with the pay issues, uh, but it, it's definitely not where it needs to be. I agree with you that even an, an increase of $10 an hour is, is probably not enough, but it's a great start. Uh, and also just to, to your point about, is it a training ground? Uh, I think that's a little less true here. We've, we've had better luck historically keeping people around and we still have a fairly experienced crew that remains, um, but we wanna make sure we can keep it that way. Thanks for the question. Thank you for your comments. Is there any other comments from the committee members? Hearing none, I'll accept the motion uh, specific to the resolution. So moved. A motion to approve. I have a motion to approve and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposition. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And uh, if I might add, the ten dollar per hour quote would increase at about twenty one thousand dollars per year. That put them in the seventy thousand dollar range. Of Number ten: discuss proposed state and federal legislation from the legislative committee members. Does anyone have anything in particular they think should be addressed? in regard to state or federal legislation. Mr. Um, I just wanted to, I have a hard uh, stop time at 30. Um, I know the County Parks Department recently uh, contacted us regarding a motion going through the Finance Committee um, for the uh, Runman Boat Landing Renovation and Improvement Project. That, uh, it was an $843,000 uh, WDNR DNR State Recreation Voting Fund grant. Um, the, uh, what happens with passive review is they'll put these motions through, and if no one objects to it, it will go through without the Finance Committee meeting. If someone flags it, um, then the Finance Committee would meet to deliberate on it. I haven't heard anything. Um, you know, I think the County's done a nice job with the justification. Um, I don't think it's the kind of thing that normally flags things. Um, they might wouldn't let that happen anyway. So um, it's the power that we have here. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a, a brief update on that. And then I guess as long as I have the floor, um, just that now, you know, between now, especially and and when the budget comes out, I mean, where you it's easier to uh, push for things at the start. In other words, where the budget starts will impact where it can ultimately go. And with agencies, there are things out there that you're concerned about or that have things to do with the county. Look at the requests as we just got an update on what the prosecutors requested. Um, you know, I know transportation and education are usually, you know, education came out, but, you know, usually a little later, but if there are other things that, you know, the requests are out, the requests are always for more money than they're going to get. But um, you know where the budget starts, either uh, under Governor Evers or Governor Michaels, is going to you know probably impact where things end up. And so, as we know, this committee's always done a really good job of flagging things that are a priority for you when you get the legislators here. Um, you know, again, it starts now, really, in between now and um, when the budget's deliberated. I certainly encourage um, you know engagement and involvement. And you return to session when? January. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, uh, Representative Hens. Anything else from legislators? Now we'll move to number 11, and this is uh, discussed proposed potential state legislation as presented uh, by the local legislators. So uh, I believe Mr. Hens covered that part of it uh, from his point of view. Is there anything else? Um, well, there's not a lot going on uh, before I get going. Um, 
you know, I'll just take this opportunity. Um, as all of you know, uh, Gordon is uh, retiring. And uh, 10 years ago, when I got uh, into the legislature, um, I uh, I didn't know Gordon at all, but you know we had our uh, our bomb throwing episodes on the, on the floor a little bit. But over the years, even though we don't agree on a whole lot uh, legislatively, um, you know I still appreciate his insight, and um, you know I wish him the best and whatever his future endeavors entail. So just wanted to thank you. Thing. You know, I always say, I don't know if every county does things like we do here, but this has always been a pretty active committee, and I'm most disappointed when I can't make it. Um, so thanks for that. Mike. I think it's for your service, sir. No, <laughs> it's, 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 it's looking forward to getting involved more. Thank you for your service. Thanks. Not a, not a lot going on at the state level. Um, you know, we're in campaign mode now for two more weeks, and uh, I think all of us are are getting pretty tired of the uh, yeah. the mailers that we you know pick out of mail and, and throw away and, and uh, radio and TV ads from both sides. But um, a number of us are involved in the summertime in the second year. Uh, the legislature has what's called Ledge Council Study Committee hearings, and it's an opportunity to kind of dive in deeper into subjects. Um, and then there are always recommendations afterwards coming out of those uh, committee hearings for the next session for uh, legislative ideas. And uh, the study committee that I'm serving on is uh, the Leg Council Study Committee on Increasing Offender Employment Opportunities. Um, as we all know, um, every employer out there is hurting for employees. Um, every industry um, is is looking for employees, and um, the state of Wisconsin releases uh, quite a number of individuals out of our state prison system every year. Um, and so, our committee. The nice thing about Ledge Council study committees is that there are senators and representatives that uh, occupy about half of the committee, and then the other half are made up of uh, stakeholders and uh, people that have interest in, in that particular <laughs> subject. <clears throat> so we've had uh, three, three or four meetings, I believe. We have one more coming up and then we'll, we'll come up with, um, you know, three or four uh, bill ideas. <clears throat> and one of the things that we're learning is that offenders that are um, coming out of the prison system, uh, there are a number of roadblocks that they run into, but one of them is uh, getting proper ID uh, because before you can have a job and open up a bank account and a lot of employers do direct deposit, you have to have two forms of, of ID. <clears throat> um, statutorily, we've required the Department of Corrections to help people that are scheduled to get out um, to obtain an ID or driver's license, but because of the um, issues, um, we are noticing that a lot of them are coming out without uh, any kind of proper ID. And the other issue is housing issues. Um, I run in actually to a couple of people um, that have been released from um, our state prisons and it's really hard for them to uh, rent anywhere because the landlords now, um, you know, there, there is such a lack of housing in our communities but let's look at the background of some of these individuals and fear that, you know, they're going to trash their apartment or not pay their rent or whatever. So um, looking at a lot of different ideas, and we do have a number of bill ideas. Rep Goyke and I, Democrat from Milwaukee, are going to be working on um, a couple pilot programs that uh, we're really excited about um, that should help that situation. So. That's what we're working on there. Um, legislatively, as I said, uh, working on the uh, land ownership uh, bill and then related to um, county business, the other issue that we're really running into um, and getting a lot of complaints about is the solar farms that are popping up all over. 
um, they're taking away a lot of uh, farmland. And the solar companies that come in pay a, a very lucrative, uh, uh, they pay a lot of money to um, do a 99 year lease on these pieces of property. And so some of the farmers that you know, are nearing retirement age, it's, it's uh, hard for them not to take the dollars. And uh, they're going all over. I mean, Count of Nakaimai has a bunch going in. Uh, Count of Rosendale has, has a bunch. Um, and the, with the research that we've done, there's not a whole lot legislatively that we can do, unfortunately, because they're regulated by um, um, PSC. And, um, and so what we've looked at is what other states are doing. And Iowa has a, a model in a, in a bill that uh, they introduced, and it's based on um, the viability of the farmland. In other words, you know, the, the amount of corn, um, and I, I don't, I, my brain's not working the greatest this morning, and I can't think of the proper terms, but it's the yield. Um, that comes off. So these uh, solar farms are only allowed to go into lower yielding areas. Um, and so we're working on, on that legislation. Um, being the chair of the corrections committee, uh, as you know, Gordon talked about, we're hearing all over, um, all agencies are, are really shorthanded. Um, Winnebago uh, Mental Health Institute has a severe shortage of nurses. They're working a lot of overtime. Um, and our prison system, uh, our facilities are running at bare bones levels. Um, Wapan, which is a maximum security prison, is only operating with 50% of the um, staff that they should have. And <clears throat> over the last couple um, budgets, we've done a number of things. We, uh, I was able to get a um, budget motion that increased the starting wage from 16.65 an hour to 1989, uh, but that still isn't enough. And um, there are a lot of correctional facilities that are at over 40% vacancy rate. And another budget motion was any, any facility that's over a 40% vacancy rate, they get a $5 add on. So right now, you know, a person coming in, working in corrections would start at about $20 an hour. If they went to work at um, Wuhan, they get an extra $5 add on. And then um, the governor from some ARPA funds actually put in another $2 an hour add-on. So, you know, it's a decent way, but um, we're still going to uh, look at increasing the, the starting wage of our correctional officers pretty significantly. Um, and, uh, you know, you can't have a maximum security prison operating with 50% of the staff. Somebody's going to get hurt, whether it's an inmate or um, guard or um, a guard, you know, working two doubles in a row, going home, sleeping for five, six, seven hours, coming back mm -hmm. in and working uh, a double again. Somebody, somebody's going to get hurt. And so we're, um, we're currently working on uh, budget motions now to uh, increase that wage um, pretty significantly. Um, can't think of a whole lot else. I know Gordon has to leave, so give him a couple minutes to. Yeah, I mean, I got I got most of mine in. Just that, um, obviously, the governor's race is going to, you know, di dictate a lot. Um, the state's in a, you know, good position um, right now. But as I think over to Mike and said earlier, you know, that five billion dollars that you hear about. Um, is also estimated. We get a revenue update in January of this year from the Fiscal Bureau that will also do a two-year projection on how much, and it's conservative, but it takes the money that we have now and then takes the economic forecasts and what we know and says, here's what we can expect to finish in terms of where state expenditures are and where revenues should be. Um, you know, and here's what things would cost. And again, they'll say there's a structural deficit only because they take all of the requests that have been made and then how much money we have and they say, oh, we're short this amount, but we have no, you know, um, you know, the, the governor's not going to introduce a budget that spends all, um, all of that money. So just stay tuned. I mean, I was in office when the bottom came out on the economy in the fall of 2008 and we went from 
having a balanced budget to being in the whole six and a half billion dollars. You know, if you're the economy slows and income tax and sales tax and corporate income tax drive up, um, you know, we'll be in a more challenging position. But we, we should have the resources at a time that we really need it. I feel like um, local government, uh, especially, is kind of having a, a moment given that, you know, we're sort of 20 years locked in on flat state aid. Um, and, you know, you, you don't want to just come to the trough saying we need more money. Um, I think you want to do kind of what, what are the consequences of flat funding? What are the kind of, what are the things you're not able to do? And again, do an assessment of where we're short labor and where it's going to take increased uh, compensation to, to fill it. But, um, you know, the, the legislature is a responsive body and what the challenges are out there. You usually try to get you know proposals and um, you know I think the resolution process from counties uh, can, can be effective. I think some of the ones that are out there that are aimed more at you know virtue signaling, uh, flag waving uh, aren't as productive. But uh, you know this committee can can be a you know helpful to us. So, uh, I will encourage whoever succeeds me to uh, make it here on Monday. While I was in attendance, if I might, uh, for the WCA convention, I heard a lot about revenue sharing. Uh, and of course, obviously, with that surplus of money, that would become a topic. Uh, do either one of you have a comment on that? About in increasing or enhancing revenue sharing to the municipalities? I was alluding to that. I think, you know, the time is sort of happening. I mean, we're, we're, we're seeing what the constraints have been and in inflationary costs with health insurance and the need for increased compensation to compete to fill positions happening. Um, the money's there. I think it's always been hard. You know, those of you that have been around for a long time or at least followed things, I mean, there used to be policy behind shared revenue that for decades was aimed at equalizing property rich and property poor communities so that they were able to have resources no matter where you live in Wisconsin. You know, early part of the century, we saw bipartisan support for the levy limits, but then we also saw they took the policy out of the state aid and just kind of made it this stagnant amount. And of course, it, now it's kind of like education funding, where if we were to tweak anything, if you create winners and losers, if you represent an area that loses money, you're not going to vote for it. So it makes it really difficult, but you know, obviously it increase even inflationary. You know, we've got the resources to do that. There have been proposals in the last two budgets. Um, and I know that obviously well, public safety between police and fire, especially at the municipal level, is usually greater than 50% of the budget. And so um, <coughs> you know, there's a lot of support for making sure that cuts don't fall on the backs of public safety. And so if you don't see just broad-based shared revenue, you might see some targeted increase in state aid directed towards public safety, which could have a net effect of, you know, obviously making the leave saving money for other programs. So um, I think, you know, it's enough out there. I don't know that the public totally gets what, it's not even called shared revenue, but it's called aid to yeah, so I would weigh in, but I think part of the problem is that you guys have done a good job. Local government, until there's blood on the streets, people don't know. I mean, you manage things, services have been, for the most part, maintained. I don't know if we, well, we obviously wish we could do more, but I think we're getting to that point where some of the cuts and cracks are appearing. And I think, you know, you don't want to play boogeyman, but there's unintended consequences of not having the resources to be able to fill positions like the you know, DA said. So I think those are the things that need to be out there for an argument stand. Thank you all. Thank you very we, much. Oh. Supervisor Cox. Okay. Okay. Mr. Hess, oh. for a second. As we have been get ready to spend all this money because we have such a large pot of cash out there. Please don't forget that at times when you needed cash to be there, you didn't have a rainy day fund and you allowed it to slide and you had to backpedal to get, to get it to a point where it is now. And okay. well, thanks. Thanks to the Republicans in, in the legislature, we have the largest rainy day fund ever. Wow. Which will last, what, 13 days? 
and it's, it's more or but and part of the reason we have so much money is because Mike and those guys wouldn't spend it because they didn't want to cover it or to get the credit for funding programs. But um no, I, I get it. I mean, you know, the reality is government usually spends too much money during good times and then not enough money during bad times. I mean, when things are bad, there's more of a need. You know, the economy's bad, crime is up, you know, if the economy's bad, there's uh, more people enrolled in badger care and things. And so it's a good lesson that you want to try to keep spending as even as possible despite the temptation. I mean, the proposals are going to spend the $5 billion 10 times over. My first flag is that that's an estimate, meaning if the economy goes south, it's not 5 billion, it's hopefully there's a cushion in there, but um, you know, some of there's going to be, I think there's enough money to put increases in the programs that matter and still look at targeted tax cuts if that's something that, you know, folks have support for. I'm, I know you don't want to do permanent, uh, you don't want to make permanent tax cuts with one-time money, but I'm just saying if that's what it takes to get people together, um, I think it's worth considering. So they don't want to kill the levy. Yeah, no, no. Once again, uh, representing the tent staff, appreciate very it. much for, you know, for coming in. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Take care. Right. Bring my pitchfork. <laughs> if there are no other questions, uh, we'll get to this in a minute, if I might. Uh, uh, the next one on the agenda is the update from the County Executive John Demo, who is not present. Okay, now update from state legislators. Uh, let me rec uh, recognize, obviously, Michael Schra, uh, Mr. Hentz, and you, sir, represent the- Congressman Grothman. Pardon me? That's Congressman Grothman. Congressman Grothman on the federal level. Thank you for attending. And do you have an update, sir? Yeah, um, you know, kind of similar situation in federal government. We're going to the elections in two weeks, so we'll know, you know, who's in charge of the Congress and what direction. They might want to go. Um, in September, they did pass a new resolution to fund the government through the middle of September or uh, December. So there will be another, um, you know, the Congress will be back in session in the middle of next month. And again, in December, and that's probably the biggest thing uh, left outstanding is to see if they fund how far out they go with it, um, probably kicking the can down the road for the next Congress. Um, Congressman Grothman has been introducing a few bills, uh, one, the Age Discrimination and Employment Parity Act, which would just uh, put age discrimination on the same ground as any other discrimination as far as what size of business is applicable, applicable to. Um, he's also introduced the Senior Independence Act. Um, this would raise the limit if, if you take Social Security, um, you know, your cap at your income at around uh, 19, $19,500 as far as what you can earn, this would raise that cap up to 30,000. Um, obviously we have workforce shortages. We could allow some folks to maybe come out of come out of retirement for a few months a year or you know whatever the industry may be. Does that mean that senior citizens could go to work uh, for a wage and not have that affect their social security? Right. That means yeah, you can come to work for me at least anytime you want. <laughs> yeah. You need car hops on you. I'm too slow. I would never make the tips like that. We have to give them. Yeah, we might need a card, you know, order. <laughs> so he, he did introduce that in August. And then uh, finally, the uh, Member Financial Transparency, uh, Transparency Act, which would uh, lower the, the deadline for the House clerk and the House uh, and the Senate clerk to uh, post you know, any stock transactions, things like that from members of Congress from 30 days down to 10 days. Uh, that would be posted online and there's been a lot of attention on you know certain members um, you know, becoming wildly wealthy um, while they serve and questions about conflicts of interest and all that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. they had a little more transparency there so that is what uh congressman growth is working on right now thank you very much are there any questions comments thank you very much sir for your attendance and your report uh we will go to number 15 on the agenda Topics to be discussed at the next legislative committee meeting, i.e. resolution from other counties. We did have several. I believe we addressed those directly to the county board floor. We have uh, a criteria, of course, we have a criteria for that. I mean, for counties that, for those resolutions from other counties, we have a kind of criteria. I thought we kind of established some 
before that we have some kind of criteria. So we don't get everyone who's going to go but yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I don't recall a criteria. Cassie, do you? Typically, if you do have a resolution that would come forward, um, they'll be referred to legislative. Uh, you might have a handful of the same resolution if you address them in the past, um, depending on the outcome of that particular uh, situation, they may not be first. I thought we had established that it came from a different county and we, we encouraged that it would go to the committee in this county, they look at it first to see what impact it was. I thought we kind of, we have an establishment, we should have that. That's my comment on that. Okay, so a, a resolution from another county, you want it to go to a standing county committee? Right. Um, before that, it we, comes to this committee? Well, yeah, because we made a resolution, I remember the, the last one, I don't know, Paul Carrera and they had to deal with a couple of different issues. And no, we came to this committee and said, how does this impact our county? And I don't know if it's going to act on But I guess when I see this from other counties, I want to know what impact is on our county. And if we don't do that, then why are we doing that? That's my next question. Okay. Uh, as far as impact, is that part of our discussion here? Yes. Well, we right. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I mean, the impact of, I mean, if, if you know, if we approve it fiscally or our policy, or, that's what I like to know. Anybody else have thoughts on Supervisor Norton's comments? Well, yes, sir. Suggest that, you know, this, I think this committee is a good housing place for that. It gives a very easy formula for what to do when things come in. And this committee can always refer things back out if there are additional. Uh, you know, additional questions. I this is only my second think meeting. Uh, so that we that uh, that I've been on, uh, and certainly don't have the history that some of you do with the type of resolutions that come forward. But it does seem that the majority of them are uh, are 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 very much in the legislative you know arena that you were talking about earlier that this committee sort of has jurisdiction over versus the operational. Uh, uh, responsibilities or operational oversight responsibilities that 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 are committees. That's my opinion. Thank you. Uh, I do know that uh, I would, as chairman, I'd kind of like to see the resolutions that come in from other counties grouped into a singular subject. I mean, you might have three or four from on the same subject. That's my thing. We can certainly do that. Uh, but I think, uh, and I appreciate your recommendation, but I, I think the process we're using is working well. And I appreciate the comment about we could always refer back, uh, which would be a motion and a second. And if the body chose to do that, that would hopefully address your concern. So I, th I think we have the options there in front of us. We just need to uh, use them if, if we desire. Chair. Yes, sir. Would it help to have some sort of an agenda as developed by this committee as to where we're going or what kind of classification for various subjects you want that should be passed on to the deputy clerk? And as for these outside, outside uh, resolutions come up, they can be paired with the correct agenda items will say that you I'm thinking of what I showed you earlier on Wicca. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that you might want to set some sort of agenda up for classifying a lot of this stuff coming in. And that way then it won't it won't get in the way of general business. It can be classified early on and either set up to be voted on or referred. I appreciate that and I'll give that some thought, Mr. Cox. Uh, <clears throat> any other comments from committee members? Uh, hearing none, we will go to number 16. Uh, and that addresses the time of the meeting and all that. It, it's in minutes. We did address that the last time we meet, met. 
uh, but I believe there was some conversation about whether or not we want to revisit that. Of course, we have our current county board rule, uh, and previously we decided to do this uh, what four times a year every three months, and they had a meeting starting at eight thirty in the morning. Yes, sir. I think the way we presently do it works very well, and we should continue that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is there anybody else that has a comment, thoughts? Yes. Yes, sir. I think when we had that discussion last time, we didn't have any of the state reps here. So when I just ask you to speak for all your colleagues, is is this a good the question that we asked was sort of what time? I've never, I've never missed one of these meetings. <laughs> well, I forgot. It, it was, maybe we forgot to invite you. Uh, uh, we don't. So I think the question that we had discussed was sort of like what time works well within the normal calendar, normal calendar you all might experience. So in the, in the first year, um, you know, we've got the budget starting January, February, March, April. Um, so, I mean, if you wanted to, on a Monday, you know, wanted to have maybe not wait three months and maybe go two months, you know, maybe do one in January and do one in uh, March, March, uh, but then in the summer, you know, July and August is not a lot going on, and then we pick up in the fall session again. Um, you know, so September, October, November, December is tough because of Christmas and everything. Um, mm -hmm. And then January, February, March of the second year um, it has a March fifteenth. Um, we kind of go into campaign mode so that the incumbents don't have an advantage. Mm -hmm. So there's not, other than pledge council study committee hearings, it's not a lot to pay for. Mm -hmm. Is the month like just yeah, Monday? Monday, yeah, Monday, yeah, Monday, Monday is probably the best yeah. Um, yeah, because the typically best everyone's in the map. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, so you're saying during the budget session, we might want to address get uh when we meet we're going to do it again in january and then typically we've met january march may and then october september usually wba so everybody's gone so we don't normally meet in september um we usually meet in october november and december to do the holidays um, so those are the ones that seem to work out the best um, so 8.30 usually the best time for you That was my next question, yeah. 8.30, Apparently not so the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure to bring Donnie Herman in for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we look forward to the election. I do. Uh, and I, I do talk to Murphy and, and uh, Rachel Cabrera. Um, well, you know, if, when, when Gus wins, he'll, he'll be fine. We want to make it, uh, of course, we have a county, new county board rule, but we want to make it as convenient for the legislators that we can because we rely heavily on your thoughts and your opinions, and uh, it's an opportunity for us to influence you. So your presence is uh, very welcome. 8.30 is the best time for you? Works great for me. Have we ever influenced you? <laughs> no. That's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a very good legislator if I went to let sources. Before I call for an adjournment, is there any other? Uh, so, do I need a vote here, Marianne? Again, do we want to do this again? We're going to keep the the quarterly schedule we have, and the starting time is. Do I need approval again from the committee? I again, I had looked at 18.7, which basically says that um, all meetings of committees should begin no earlier than three unless the committee unanimously agrees. And you had said at the last meeting the committee had unanimously agreed, so that's done. Do you want confirmation? I haven't no, I, I trust action you. on here. I, I trust your word. Okay, it'd be real simple. It, it, you want to take another vote on that? We can. Okay, do I have a motion to uh, approve meeting quarterly? That would be January, March, May, and October of a given year at 8.30 a.m. So technically not. Pardon me. Um, technically, technically not quarterly. I mean, we're meeting in January, we're meeting in March, and May. It's every two months in the first 
Well, I got January, February, March. That's my quarter, right? Quarter, 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 quarter. Yeah, over we'll four years. So, okay. Yeah, so January, March, May, and then so we're meeting for you. For you. I have a motion and a second. And it meets on Monday. Monday. Oh, yes, on Monday. Yes. It's usually uh, probably the fourth Monday, but it's right. It's probably the fourth Monday. Fourth yeah. Monday. We can alternate that if we needed to, but that's the general promise. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposition? None motion carries. Number 17, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. And I do want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, motion to adjourn. I have a second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, say none. Carries, we are adjourned. Thank you. I'll be right there. So, uh, I just I was running like they alluded me. No, no, I no, like I, you know, I'm out of meetings. I kind of like chop it down. I remember that speaker to speak. It's all gonna go up and like. Anyways, well, there was five of us there. None of us got. Yeah, they were just they were.